Today we're going to show you how your McDonald's is processed inside of your body. The human digestive system is a group of organs and glands that process what we eat by breaking the food down physically and chemically so that vital nutrients can be extracted and absorbed by cells for energy. The human body absorbs several nutrients such as proteins or carbohydrates, further classified as monosaccharides, disaccharides or polysaccharides. These types of carbohydrates each have their own physical traits, but anyway, let's move on. This is a cross-section of the human mouth, right before you ingest the food. The first step of the food breakdown begins. Food polymers are bitten, chewed, ground into smaller monomer molecules and swallowed. The chemical digestion starts in the mouth when saliva containing amylase enzymes is secreted by the salivary glands. This commences the breakdown of starch into simple sugars. The substrate, which is starch, binds to the active site of the amylase to form the enzyme substrate complex. After this, two simple sugar products break off from the complex called glucose and maltose. The teeth assist in the mechanical digestion of the food by masticating and biting to break down the food into smaller bits. This creates a larger surface area for the enzymes to work on, making the process faster. The tongue moves the food around the mouth and then pushes the food to the pharynx for swallowing. The epiglottis directs the food down to the esophagus in the alimentary canal. The larynx is pulled up to meet the epiglottis, therefore it seals off the trachea. This here is the esophagus. It is the connecting pipe between the mouth and the stomach. The esophagus transports the food, known as the bolus, down to the stomach using wave-like contractions called wave peristalsis. Peristalsis is muscular movements along the digestive tract. They help push the food along. At the end of the esophagus, before the bolus drops into the stomach, it reaches the esophageal sphincter. The food passes the liver, which produces bile to store in the gallbladder. The liver also filters the bloodstream by detoxifying the food for your body. Once the food reaches your stomach, the food is churned back and forth by peristalsis. This breaks the food into chyme. The chyme is mixed with gastric juice, a juice that contains proteins and enzyme. This enzyme begins the digestion of protein and turns the protein into amino acids. The gastric juice also has hydrochloric acid which kills any bacteria and provides the best pH for the proteins. The stomach has a brain of its own called the enteric nervous system. This system is made up of about 500 million nerve cells and lets us know how hungry we are. Slowly, through the pyloric sphincter, the chyme is released into the duodenum the beginning of the small intestine. The gallbladder secretes its stored bile into the duodenum. The bile neutralizes acid in the food from the stomach and also assists in the digestion of lipids. It does this by emulsifying the fats, creating a larger surface area for the lipase to work on. The lipase comes from the pancreatic juice, which comes from the pancreas. The pancreatic juice contains lipase, proteins, and carbohydrates. The pancreas is not only part of the digestive system, it is also part of the endocrine system as it provides insulin for the human body. Lipase is the enzyme that begins the breakdown of lipids, fats and oils. Protease enzymes such as pepsin and trypsin are responsible for the breakdown of proteins. This is going to be the good one. Protease is responsible for the breakdown of proteins. The enzyme carbohydrates is very alike to amylase because it performs a very similar function. Still as chyme, the food enters the middle section of the small intestine, the jejunum. The jejunum is covered by a tissue of epithelium. It is, it is responsible for absorbing nutrients into the bloodstream through its villi and microvilli. The nutrients are absorbed by the lymphatic capillaries, the small vessels that link the arteries and the veins. The thin membrane of the capillaries allow a transportation of oxygen and nutrients into the body's tissues and absorption of carbon dioxide and waste products back into the blood circulatory system. The nutrients are absorbed by processes such as diffusion and osmosis. 
but diffusion is most effective when there is a higher concentration of nutrients, so the nutrients can move to an area of lower concentration. Osmosis is applied for a transport of lower to higher concentrations. The next part of the small intestine is called the ileum. The walls of the ileum produce a liquid containing three enzymes, protease, lipase and carbohydrates. These enzymes finish the digestion of fats to fatty acids and glycerol. The enzymes also finish the digestion of starch to simple sugars and protein to amino acids. Like the jejunum, the ileum is especially adapted for absorbing nutrients into the blood. Carbohydrates and proteins are absorbed into the blood vessel and fats go into the lymph vessel. Food that cannot be digested goes into the large intestine. In the large intestine, also known as the colon, water is absorbed into the blood. The large intestine has three parts, the ascending colon, the transcending colon, and the descending colon. After passing through the large intestine, the indigestible semi-solid feces go to the rectum, where they are stored. After being stored, they are passed through the anorectal line and the anus out of the body as excess waste. The discharge of the feces out of the body is called defecation. There are two types of excess waste. Solid waste or feces which comes out of the anus. Also there is urine containing urea which comes from the human bladder. The digestive system can occasionally have complications and this can cause problems. Such problems include constipation and acid reflux. Constipation has many causes, but it can be caused by a slow passage of chyme through the intestine. Acid reflux is a fairly common condition in which acid in the stomach rises up into the esophagus. This occurs because the valve such as the esophageal sphincter separating the contents of the stomach from the esophagus does not function properly. Sodium bicarbonate can be used to treat the acid reflux or indigestion. Also there is diarrhea, which is caused by dehydration or a bacterial infection. Thank you for watching.